All right, here we are. It's time for our unique devotion. So today, the question ends up being, there was a few things that stood out, but I ended up going with one question. Um, so today we are in Colossians, uh, the book of Colossians, chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 19 uh, through 23. This is entitled, Reconciled in Christ. Now, if you remember uh, yesterday, and if you didn't see yesterday's video, I encourage you to go back and watch that one. Um, we talked about the, well, I, I came up with a word in the middle of it, a, a phrase in the middle of it, called the all factor. Um, and the, the importance of the word all, um, how, how God is in all things and through all things. He is in the invis all invisible things. He's in all visible things. Um, and that includes you. Um, so I encourage you to go back and rewatch that video. If you did watch it yesterday, I really hope you went a little deeper with that and maybe even had an aha moment. And like totally or yeah, at the most completely blew your mind um, and opened your eyes and your mind and your heart and your soul to something bigger and, and newer in the way of being able to connect with God. Um, and not feeling like he's so far away, but knowing that he's right here. So anyway, <clears throat> important part is the scripture. <laughs> so let me get right to that. Here we go. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and in him to reconcile all things to himself, there's that word all again, by him whether things on earth or living in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. If, indeed, you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. <clears throat> so that's the scripture. Um, yeah, so some things stood out. Let's ride this thought train. Um... Yesterday, when I talked about the word all, here it is again. He says, um, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. Um, there's a bit of a complicated thought process here. But he wants us to be reconciled. He's done just about everything that he could possibly do, seemingly bad to good, to bring us back into connection with him. In the Old Testament, he's uh, talked to people, um, himself coming and talking to people, um, Moses, Noah. He's, he's flooded the world and started over, hoping that, you know, trying to rebuild it in a different way. Didn't work. He was trying... <clears throat> Knowing how it was going to go, this is where it gets complicated, knowing that he was going to end up having to uh, bring himself into existence as a man and sacrifice himself on the cross, he still went through these scenarios because it ends up building a history and lessons for us to learn from now. And throughout history, some people had some super, super hard lessons to learn, um, like, <clears throat> like the flood itself. But all things, in some form or fashion, <coughs> excuse me, are to be brought through for him, for his sake. <coughs> I don't cut these videos. This is me. When I'm sick, 
when I have a cold, when I have allergies, when I'm fine, when I'm happy, when I'm sad, whatever shows up, shows up. This is just being real. And this blog is mostly, this is really a, a vlog um, initially for me anyway. So, <clears throat> coughing may appear <laughs> throughout this video. So the question that comes to me then, as we read further on, is are you grounded? Yesterday's thought of all sort of takes our minds, you know, universal. It's like out and everywhere when you're thinking about that. But then here it, it talks about in faith being grounded and steadfast, not moved away from the hope of the gospel. <clears throat> So, it's important for us to be able to take our mind, like yesterday, to deep, far-off thought processes and f that feeling of expanding. But it's also important to bring all that back and maybe even at the same time be grounded. Um, not letting things just toss us around even the things that I say that you hear you really should question not question whether I'm necessarily right or wrong and try to point out my wrong doings or wrong sayings more of question it so that you can go deeper with it so that you can uh, okay so maybe I, I point out a word in Scripture and I, slay, I use it in the right context, but there's a bit of a deeper meaning. And you look up that word, and you find the original language, and you find that deeper, that deeper meaning, that deeper understanding. And then you comment, and you let me know, and let us know about what you found. Now, that not isn't saying that I did it wrong. It's saying that I only went so deep with it. You took it a little deeper. You bring us knowledge. Now, we're both a little bit deeper in that understanding and that brings grounding the more that we search for the correctness of what God is trying to get at the more that we work towards um, those sorts of things the better off we are and the more grounded we become because when we're grounded when we're solid we tend to make better decisions we tend to form stronger deeper better habits we tend to treat others um, in a much different way. And that's very, um, it's a very good path to take. I thought there was something else here, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, just before that part it says, who once were alienated and enemies Sometimes we all feel alienated, especially when we're not grounded. Sometimes we feel like there are enemies in the world, like people are out to get us, out against us. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? But that's not necessarily the case. We shouldn't feel like enemies. We shouldn't feel like we're alienated. We should feel grounded. And in that grounding, be, we're able to uh, 